course, tonight we have some audience members who need to say something to somebody in their lives, but they can't bring themselves to do it, so we're having comedians say it for them. First up is Greg. He's going to help Noreen from Florida. Noreen, what do you want to say to whom? All I want to tell my son, it's time to pop the question. Five years is enough. Greg, would you help? His name is Michael, Michael, you said? His name okay. is Michael. Michael, your mom uh, has told me you've been dating a girlfriend for five years now. It's about time you ask for anal. <laughs> Thank you. Five years. Thank you very much. All right. Now here's Neil from Houston. Here's Neil. Right here on this side. Here's Neil from Houston. By the way, Neil, who's never been in show business, just had to tell Frank, who's been in for 20 years and is on The Sopranos and is a hilarious comedian, where to stand. You really are a dummy. <laughs> All right. Neil from Houston. Frank is going to help you. What's ailing you, Neil? I just wanted to tell my wife that I'm sorry that I got fat. All right, Frank. <laughs> well, first of all, what's your wife's name? Carol. Carol. I think he looks great. <laughs> <laughs> and the only thing I can tell you is, is that when he's eating ice cream and he pulls the top off the ice cream, you want to lose some weight? Throw that away. <laughs> <laughs> the top part. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> Stephanie. It's Stephanie from Detroit. And helping her is Jim Gaffigan. Yeah. Uh, Pestons, maybe, tomorrow? Yeah. Stephanie, yeah. what's your problem? Well, I just want to tell my boyfriend's ex to lay off. Mm. Jim, would you help with that? Yeah. <laughs> I, uh... This is hard for me, because for me to say as a woman, because I know you loves my man, because I loves my man, and um, I'm from Detroit, and if you don't lay off, I'm going to burn down your house. Oh, thank you, Jim. Thank you. I hope you help. You're going to get Jimmy Can Kimmel canceled with that crack. This is Annie from Kansas with Jim Norton. Annie, who do you have a message for? Um, I want to tell my parents that I'm dropping out of medical school and I'm not a virgin anymore. Well, who better? Jim? No, Jim's... Um, well... Um, she's dropping out of school and um, she's not a virgin anymore. And without that uh, medical school, after we hook up, she's not going to have money to pay for that herpes medication she's going to need. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. I think we accomplished something. <laughs> we'll be right back. Lewis Black on an all-new Tough Crowd with Colin Quinn. Tomorrow at 1130, only on Comedy Central. Folks, Entertainment Weekly recently broke the news. The sitcom is dead. Write a eulogy for this once beloved art form. Frank Santorelli. Hi. <laughs> it's great to see everybody here. Um, you know, growing up in my house, you know, there was always an argument about what sitcom to watch. All in the family or good times. MASH or what's happening now. Happy days or Chico and the man. You know what my father would say? He'd say, turn that crap off. And I'd say, Dad, this 22 minutes is mine. You know, we never really connected until Rhoda. <laughs> I'm really going to miss those shows. I've long ago laid them to rest, and I want them to rest in peace, and now it's time to pay respects to the last really great sitcom, Reba. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right, Jim, folks. He used up your applause time. <laughs> Jim Norton. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, you didn't die of natural causes. You were murdered by liberal guilt. Uh, challenging statements you used to make uh, were replaced by sassy, sharp as a whip gals, over the top gay men, and adorably <laughs> precocious kids. Instead of confronting social problems and addressing them with brilliant sarcasm, you're forced to ignore these problems and concentrate on meaningless, soulless innuendos just so a bunch of frightened college mentality white people wouldn't have to address their deep seated superiority complex. 
Alexis. <laughs> the only thing, uh, po the only positive thing about your death is now a bunch of unfunny, untalented network sitcom writers will be unemployed and hopefully kill themselves. That was kind of beautiful, actually. I love that. Is that Wait! <laughs> that was a eulogy? That was a eulogy. <laughs> Jim! <laughs> Thank you, Colin. <laughs> the sitcom I remember wasn't very smart or funny or interesting, but it was very predictable and always kind. Kind to Brooke Shields when no one else wanted her. Kind to mediocre writers who couldn't get jobs in advertising. Kind to networks looking for mindless drivel to fill in between commercials. So goodbye, sitcom, and till this fall when that rag Entertainment Weekly will undoubtedly announce your resurrection. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Greg, I love this. Well, sitcom, I know it's wrong to speak ill of the dead, but let's face it, you were a nasty bitch. <laughs> Sure, you worked hard making so many mediocre talents rich and famous, but I'm a mediocre talent. Where are my millions? Some say you were killed by reality TV. Nonsense. Sure, people love to watch bubble-breasted half-wits eating monkey balls, but they also love to laugh. And let's face it, from suddenly Susan to yesteryear, you've been about as watchable as Jim Norton's rectal cankers. <laughs> now that you're gone, I guess I'll... I guess I'll just keep scratching out a living on basic cable while American Idol turns a tone-deaf Vietnamese eunuch into a celebrity. All right, that's the show! Good night! I got a little mad at Jim Gaffigan tonight. Uh, should the comics at least pretend to be interested in the topics? Uh, well, you know, it's my one pet peeve when they have to go like to Paula and goes, who gives a damn? Jim said it in a more polite way, but it was basically, you know, if we can't live with the one premise of the subject being interested,